Engaging the breakthrough power of the word. Engaging the breakthrough power of the word. Engaging the breakthrough power of the word. You and I, as children of God, we are redeemed for breakthroughs in life. We are redeemed for breakthroughs, not breakdown. In Matthew 25, beginning from verse 14, the Bible tells us that we are the light of the world. We are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. He said, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Say with me, my light will shine. Say it convincingly and say it with faith, my own light will shine. That is what God has ordained for you and I. In Isaiah chapter 60, if you read verse 1, he said, arise and shine, for your light has come. Now, verse 2, it doesn't matter what is happening around you. It doesn't matter what is happening in the world. He said, though darkness shall cover the earth, grow darkness of people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The ones who believe it will say loud, amen. amen. And the Gentiles shall come to your light. And the king stood the brightness of your rising. Someone who receives it will say louder, Amen. Amen. That is who you are by redemption. You are not redeemed a local champion. No. I think I prayed, I should pray the same prayer for someone here. I was inspired to pray that prayer in the first service. But if your faith can carry it and if you're interested in it, in the name of Jesus, for someone here, in your own lifetime, you shall become 10,000 times better than your peers. Amen. I said, in your own lifetime, you shall become 10,000 times better than your peers. Amen. Is it possible? Yes. Why? God has done it before and he can do it again because he has not changed. And what God has done for one, God can do for all. Concerning David, they said, you are more than 10,000 of us. That is one equal to 10,000. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray for someone here again, that in your own lifetime, in my own lifetime, God will make us 10,000 times better than our peers. That is not selfishness, that is not greed. So if you are 10,000 times better than others, so what happens to the others? Well, they can determine whatever they want to be. So if you are the light of the world, what is now happening to the others? They can decide to be anything. They can become the candle of the world. They can become the uh, lantern of the world. It doesn't matter. Everybody, it is to every man as far as his eyes can see. As far... You see, your rising does not stop somebody else from rising. Have you seen a plane towing another in the sky before? Have you seen traffic jam in the sky before? It is only on the ground that you find traffic jam. You say, move, I don't move. You don't move, I don't move. Uh, you, you only can tow people on the ground. So leave the ground. Tell your neighbor, leave the ground, leave the ground, leave the ground. That is not where you belong. Leave the ground. We are redeemed for continuous breakthrough. But hear this. God is a God of processes and products. God is a God of processes and products. His products are the provisions he has ordained for you and I. And so, if you are interested in the product, mind the process. If you are interested in the product, mind the process. To ignore the process is to miss out on the product. If you want bread, for instance, there is a process to making bread, true or false.
To ignore the process is to miss out of the product. And the process, as God has ordained, is contained in his word. In Psalm chapter 103, verse 7, he made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. What are his ways? The process. What are the acts? The product. Isaiah chapter 55, we read from verse 8 to 11. Look at this very carefully. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not either, but watereth the earth, and make it to bring forth and board, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. That God forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent him. His word is his way. And it is his way that leads to his products. His word is his way. If you are interested in the product, mind is word. Mind is word. Jesus was speaking to them in John chapter 14 and verse 6. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And who is this Jesus? He is the living word. John chapter 1 beginning from verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. His word. Is his way, his word is the way. So let's look at a few things very quickly. What is in his word? The word is the way to all our inheritances in Christ. The word of God is the way to all our inheritances in Christ. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. So there are inheritances that you and I have of God by redemption. Now, some of these are listed in Revelation 5. And verse 12, talking about the sevenfold redemptive packages that you and I have access to in Christ. What is the lamb that was slain to receive for you and I, number one, power, number two, riches, number three, wisdom, number four, strength, number five, honor, number six, glory, and number seven, blessings. Raise your hand. In the name of Jesus, no cause shall find expression in your own life. Yeah. Why? You have been redeemed from the cause. Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on us through Jesus Christ. Say with me, Jesus is the way. How will the blessing come? Through Christ. Through Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. There are inheritances loaded for you and I in redemption. But the word of God is the way because number one, you have to know of what God has provided. Number two, you have to know how to get it. There is a path to every destination. Whatever place you are going to, there is a way to get there, true or false. Psalm 
2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So me, I am called to glory. I am called to virtue. Now whatever it is that I've been making men mock you or bringing shame to you, by the authority of the word, I command an end to that experience. Whatever makes you bow your head before your peers, whatever makes you hide your face, in the name of Jesus, I command an end to it. When I pray for you, I don't do it to get you excited. I pray as the Spirit beats me per time. And hear me, he who sent me and gave me the privilege of grace to be here by the hand of his servant, the chancellor, performs the counsel of his messenger. And so you're saying amen is not to get me encouraged. You're saying amen is to say, Lord, I believe. Be it unto me according as it is spoken. A young woman came into the service, one of those services, and then by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I mentioned that we are going to jump, we are going to shout, we are going to scream. And as we shout, Hosanna, everything that is buying and selling in your body, everything God had not ordained, shall drop off you. Now, prior to this time, according to her, her menstrual flow had ceased. At that time, I think she was less than 30, but her menstrual flow had ceased. Gone to the doctors, taking all manner of prescriptions. The only option she had left was surgery. But that morning, she came in, following the instruction, jumped, shouted, and by the time she landed on the floor, according to her, she had a push on her inside. Ran to the toilet, and lo and behold, the menstrual circle that the enemy stopped, God had terminated. God is not a joker. Amongst other things, in case you don't know, your inheritance is to get 5.0 this first semester. Some of you are wondering what is this saying? That is part of your inheritance. Because by redemption, you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only. You shall not come beneath. Number two, understand that the word of God is the way out of our predicaments. The word of God is the way out of our predicaments. No matter the situation and the challenge of life, there is a word solution to every problem that you and I we are confronted with. There is a word solution to every challenge of life. Look at this scripture, 1 Corinthians to the 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians to the 10 and verse 13, it said, There is no temptation that is taking you but such as is common. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear? For with the same temptation, what will he do? He will also make a way of escape. Every challenge of life has a word solution. I remember some time ago I was in a location. We needed a property for the church. We had done everything that we know how to do. We couldn't get one. We needed two plots. We were able to get one plot. And it was very expensive. But because of our processes and all of that, we couldn't get approval. So we are looking for one more plot. And then months went by, we couldn't get. 
But one day, we came into the service for a prayer meeting, and just before I went up to lead the personal supplication, I had the Holy Spirit say to me, today, tell the people there's no, there no personal supplication. The personal supplication is this. There is a world solution that addresses their problems. Whatever it is that is a concern to anyone, there is a world solution. So ask, tell them, ask me for what I have said, what is written concerning the situation at hand. Whatever I say to them, they bring it to me in prayers, I will confirm it for a testimony. So I went up and I told the people, I said, okay, so men and brethren, today there's no personal supplication. This is what the Spirit of God is saying. There is a word for every challenge that you and I we are going through. Ask me for that word. When I give you that word, bring it to me in prayers. I will confirm it to you for a testimony. And so we close the service. And then I got home. I sat on my chair, on my couch, and I said, Lord, you see, I also have a challenge. And the challenge is that we need a property. We need a land for your church. It's been months and nothing has happened. What are you saying? I went to bed that night. I woke up the next morning with two powerful scriptures bubbling in my spirit. The first said, I am the God. The art is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all day that were therein. The land you want to buy is mine. Nobody met land on, nobody was born with land. Everybody met land on the earth, true or false. The agent that is putting pressure on you, that if you don't bring the money, he will sell the land to somebody else. The one plot you have, he is mine. The landlord is mine. I am the God of all flesh. There's nothing too hard for me to do. The church you want to build is mine. The pastor to approve it is mine. The money to pay for it is mine. The gold is mine and the silver is mine. Which of them is yours? I said none. Immediately, I knew exactly what he was saying. I picked my phone, I called the agent, and I said to him, go back to that same street where we have that one plot. There is another plot waiting for us in that same place. The man was very angry. He said, don't disturb me. We've been on this matter for how many months? You can't be tossing me to and fro. I said, go back there today. As I'm talking to you now, be on your way there. He went there, and for the first time, he met somebody by the street, just opposite the property, and asked the man, is it true that there is a land on this street that is for sale? The man said, yes, this one is for sale. This one opposite you too is also for sale. That is how God terminated that struggle. <laughs> Amen. I can't take you through all the many things that God did for us, but today... The church is sitting on that property. There is a word solution to every challenge. The word of God is our escape. Escape from sickness, escape from satanic assault, escape from nightmares, escape from limitations. The answer is in the word. That is why you should pay attention to the word. Settle down with the word. It is not how much you can struggle. It is much more about how much God shows to you. There is a way out of every situation. In the name of Jesus the Christ, may today be your own day of escape. I said, may today be your own day of escape. May today be your own day of escape. In the name of Jesus Christ. Following his ways. Is the gateway to the highways of life. Now, we take a few more. The word of God is the way forward in our pursuit. If you are interested in outstanding success, follow the way. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and observe to do according to all that is written, for then thou shalt make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Look at this very carefully. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. What will happen to this man? 
It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He will bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. That is me God is talking about. Say amen. amen. If you are interested, you say amen for yourself too. Amen. That is you God is talking about. Say louder, amen. amen. Raise your right hand to heaven in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do with these hands this semester, every test you write, every exam, every assignment, every assessment shall be prosperous. For those of us who have some other engagement in the sideline, maybe business or what have you, whatever it is you do with these hands, it shall prosper. Amen. I said, whatever you do with these hands, it shall prosper. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What more? The word of God is the way to supernatural breakthroughs. The word of God is the way to supernatural breakthroughs. We already had mentioned that earlier. I that. We are redeemed for supernatural breakthroughs. The word of God is the way to healing, health, and wholeness. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5 tells us concerning Jesus. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, referring to the same scripture. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who himself bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye we are healed. By whose stripes? You came in with any kind of sickness in your body right now. I want you to just place your right hand on that part of your body where you're experiencing that discomfort. You don't know where to put your hand. Place it on your chest. Now, in the name of Jesus the Christ, I rebuke that spirit of infirmity. Amen. Every spirit of sickness, every spirit of affliction, tormenting your body, buffeting your body, I cast them out in the name of Jesus. Now that pain be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your organs be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Spirit, soul, and body be quickened in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever symptom came into this service with you today, none is permitted to return with you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so let's try to conclude. The word of God is the way to prosperity. Say the word of God is the way to prosperity. You are not redeemed to be poor. You are redeemed to be rich. God doesn't want you poor. God wants you rich. Let's take this scripture and then we'll rise to pray. Job chapter 22, beginning from verse 21, we are reading all through to verse 25. Thank you, Jesus. Have you been blessed in this service this morning? Now, let's read together one to go. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the love from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. Verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Verse 25. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And what will you have? What will you have? Somebody is saying a resounding amen to that. Rise up on your feet, lift up your hands to heaven, and give God thanks.